Hi and welcome to this last part in the YouTube series on using Landsuper for cybersecurity. I'm Asbun, community manager here at Landsuper, and I'll be taking you through the last part here. In the first two parts, we looked at what kind of data Landsuper retrieves from a single asset and how you can use that for cybersecurity. And then in the second part, we took a closer look at reporting and how you can leverage reports to get more insight on cybersecurity within your entire IT network. In this last video, we'll take a look at email alerts and how you can get notified when something goes wrong, when you need a cybersecurity alert. Uh, and we'll also take a look at dashboards and how you can create a Landsuper cybersecurity dashboard. So we'll start with setting up a email alert. So on the alerts configuration page, we have our two types of alerts. We have our um, email report alerts and we have our email event log alerts. So for the email report alerts, this is basically a scheduled uh, report output that is being sent to uh, the email address that you choose, which can be useful for things that you want to kind of be alerted on on a regular basis. Important to note here is that empty reports will not be emailed to you. Um, that allows you to really create reports uh, specialized for alerting so that you only get alerted when needed. Uh, as an example here, we'll add the report for the uh, servers without antivirus. So here we have servers, all servers without antivirus. We'll add that. Um, the alert type is email. We'll add it to our test group. And then we want it to be uh, a CSV, for example. And um, you can choose three different types of ret report export types. Uh, the email group can be configured just above it. Here we have our test email. And then you can also set the specific schedule. Um, so you can say, I want it um, every Monday. I want this report in my email inbox. So this type of alerting is really useful for alerts like the uh, service without antivirus report. Um, or the uh, unauthorized administrators report, um, even software changes report. It really just kind of depends on, on your use case and what you want to be alerted on. So the second type of alerts is the email event log alert. This works slightly different from the report alerting. It basically just sends you an alert as soon as it finds the event that you told it to alert on. So as an example here, we'll add an event filter. So we want to alert on, um, we'll just pick a random event here. Um, supposedly this is a, um, you know, you can choose whatever event you want. This can be a security related event, obviously in, in most cases here. Um, we'll select the event, hit OK. And then all we need to do is make sure that we select the email group that it needs to send to. As soon as that specific event gets scanned, you get an alert in your email inbox. So good example use cases for this would be a specific um, security related events on, on your servers, your production servers that need close monitoring, um, or basically any type of, um, event that you need to pay close attention to and really shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be occurring in your event log. So alerts are just one way how you can stay up to date, uh, on the uh, latest security information that your land super has been retrieving. Uh, another great way of doing that is using one of our dashboards. So I'll go to one of the dashboards that I've prepared here. Um, I've quickly made a security dashboard with uh, a lot of relevant security related information. Um, as the widgets here load in on the top left hand side, you can see our latest scene assets. Um, so this kind of falls in line with the uh, new devices or new machines scanned. Um, if there are new devices that Landsweeper picks up, you'll see them in the top at left hand side. Um, then going down, we have a chart with the last Windows updates. Um, so this is kind of a way to get an overview of um, how long ago your Windows machines were updated. Uh, obviously, you want this to be as recent as possible. Uh, and then below that, we have our uh, chart of the failed login events, um, kind of to give, to give an indication of how many login or failed login events um, have been created uh, within our network. Now, the center one, this is a very important one, the uh, alert report. Um, this is basically a collection of different reports within Landsweeper. Um, so they're categorized based on their kind of importance. So we have our high priority, important and informational. Uh, in the high priority, I've, I've put a few um, vulnerability reports. So we have the VLC player deployment one. Um, this one is specifically put in there. I put this one in there um, so you can see uh, how many devices you still have that need to be updated. 
Below that, we have a more informational report about the zombie load vulnerability that was recently uh, disclosed by Intel. And then we have some additional antivirus reports in there. Um, we have a BitLocker report in there as well. Uh, these are all hyperlinked, so if I wanted to take a look at one of these just to see how many um, machines I still need to update or how many uh, machines might be vulnerable to the specific vulnerability, I can just click on it and it'll take me straight to the report. Um, similar to that, I have some important uh, reports in here as well. So we have our uh, security center service not running. Uh, we also have here a performance counter report to take a look at our CPU mm -hmm. usage. Um, having you know having a high CPU usage could indicate that something malicious is running on your computer and using all of those resources. So that's useful as well. And then at the bottom we have some informational uh, reports that I've added, uh, things like the software changes, um, some network utilization from performance counters, uh, taking a look at, look at our trusted platform modules where we can use hardware-based uh, encryption. Uh, memory changes is more physical security wise. You know, if, if all of a sudden some RAM sticks start disappearing from your servers, uh, might be interesting to take a look at um, and some other reports there as well. Now, the most useful thing about this alert report widget is that you can fully customize it yourself with your own reports or any report that is within Landsweeper. Um, all you basically need to do is head over to the config where here we have our security dashboard that we added and simply you get a list of all the reports that I've put in there. You can add a report if you want. You can choose whether uh, it indicates a color or not. So that is useful for, like I said, the VLC player deployment one. Um, it shows me um, how many devices still need to be deployed on. If there's anything in the report, it will show up as red, meaning that you still need to take action. If it's empty, it will show green. If I go back, you'll see that as well. So as you can see here, our VLC deployment is red and then the ones that are empty, um, you know, there's no antivirus that has been disabled or expired. So that means uh, it's all good and uh, for the check mark is green. We've also added uh, a event filter widget here. Uh, the event filter widget basically just takes a look at all your events that have been scanned and um, applies a filter as the name suggests. If I go to edit it here, you can see I've added a uh, log file filter so that the log file needs to be equal to security and then it shows information from the last seven days. Um, you can change this to a lot of different things. You know, you can select on specific computer or specific event ID or event type, etc. Um, so there's a lot of options there as well. And moving down to the bottom, we have two just uh, report widgets. Basically, they just show you the content of a report. I've added here two vulnerabilities that we've released. Um, this is an easy way to get a quick overview of uh, how many machines uh, still need to be updated, which ones are good and which ones still need taken action on. Then on the right hand side, we have our Landsweeper news, uh, useful for our vulnerability updates, our patch Tuesday, as you can see here. Um, they're hyperlinked so you can quickly navigate to the um, specific blog post that we have. We have um, an RSS feed below that. I've added a RSS feed for the Center for Internet Security, you know, also security related vulnerability updates that are put in there. And then at the bottom, we have our uh, Microsoft Security Advisory widget there as well. Um, you know, to add any of these widgets, um, you can simply create a, a new dashboard, which is done by just clicking Add New Tab. And then you give it a name and you can choose to share it with all the Landsweeper users or just make it a personal one. Once you've done that, you can click on the Add Widgets. And here's a list of all the widgets, um, as well as display options on the left hand side. Um, this is basically just drag and drop so you could add or remove anything here. Um, for example, you could add the uh, last seen users. I'll just add it here below the assets and it'll be added instantly there. Uh, any of these widgets can be reordered. So, you know, if I want this RSS feed above the Landsweeper news, just drag and drop. It's basically that simple. Um, we'll add another data report here on the right hand side, maybe um, where I'll take a look at um, maybe something about Chrome. So the Chrome 75 security update and then save that and that will be displayed as well. So the general idea of this dashboard is that obviously um, it's a starting point for you. Uh, when you open Landsweeper, you get your security dashboard in front of you. You can go over the most important reports that you've added to Landsweeper. You basically have all the important security related information right in front of you. So you can start uh, monitoring, uh, seeing if anything is wrong or taking action straight away. So this concludes our YouTube series on using Landsweeper for cybersecurity. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more about Landsweeper, take a look at the following videos.